What is up, everybody? Today we're talking Tyrese Gibson's mental meltdown and more on Black Hollywood Lives this week. You are tuned in to Black Hollywood Live this week. Ethnic right now. I get it how I live it. Oh. I live it how I get it. Come to motherfucking digits. I pull it with a lemon. Not cause she ain't living. It's just your eyes get acidic. And this ain't a scrimmage. Motherfucker, we ain't finished. I told you we won't stop. A nigga by the business. Like yours, but you're in it. Way the low to the top. I see. Courtney, you was in Courtney was so you were in the video. She was back Stewart. in her college days at NRD. Yeah. Courtney Stewart was in the video. She was having a moment right there. What's up, everybody? Moment. Welcome to Black Hollywood Lives this week. I'm your host, Daryl <laughs> Kristen. Joining me today is the dancing Courtney Stewart. I know. I'm trying to get I told you to get my energy up. I gotta right. go. Because right. it's cloudy and it's cool, and I just wanna be on a blanket with some chili. Yeah. But I'm not doing that. I'm at work. So we gotta get it up. You said with chili. I All right. Some chili. Man, you know while she wanna be under some blanket with some chili, I wanna be at a bar where happy hour <laughs> day the dead and I know all the deals are going down because we're in California and all the margaritas and the tacos and whatnot. It's your boy DJ Jesse. Boop. AKA Steven Spielberg yes. today. I know. You're giving me very much a uh, film director right now. Okay. But we got two special guests in the house. One is right next to me, Dr. Christopher Metzler right here. What's up? Woo -woo. He's like, he's welcome, like, what's welcome. Up? He's like, what's up with the soup? I know. <laughs> nah, I know. I'm like, hey, wow. I'm I saw you dancing to the song. <laughs> he no, got it. Like, he yeah. usually he comes with the suit. Oh, that, you know? I, yeah, I, you know. Yeah, he usually has a bow tie or something going on. Fall yeah. yeah. weather got him stepping out himself. Right, right. <laughs> uh, okay. it's, it's, it's all about the chillaxingness. The oh, end of this year. Chillaxingness. Okay. Our, our, our other special guest is Jared Ellis. You know him as Snoop Dogg in Hi. All Eyes on Me. Tupac's hey. film this year. Ow, ow. Welcome as well. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks welcome, for having welcome. Me. He's a little upset right now because of the game yesterday with the Dodgers and the Astros. Yes, and I know yes. you, you know, I know you're still mourning that situation. Aww. Yeah, and the weather's not helping at all either, like you Aww. said. But uh, next year, next, next year, year, man, it's year. always next year. Oh, yeah, high hopes. There's always hopes. next year. Yeah. Or another 38. How long was it? Oh. oh. How long did it wow, take? Wow, way to was rub it? the salt in the way. Jeez. I'm from Atlanta, <laughs> and we ain't won nothing in my <laughs> lifetime. I'll be 50 or something. This ain't my lifetime. All right. Okay. I had my heart broken Ooh. in January. Yeah. Okay? The Falcons. So I get you. Uh, that's true. Yeah. That's I understand. True. That's very true. I understand. Well, we got a lot of good topics today. Uh, we we're going to start off with uh, DJ Jesse J. Oh, yeah. All right. So what is this man's name from Papa John's? Because I cannot. We're going to no call longer. him Papa. We're going to call <laughs> Papa. Papa John. Big Papa John. <laughs> Oh, his name, John. So, his name is know, Papa John. In the past, he has uh, come out and been very vocal, um, which is an interesting thing when you want to sell some stuff. You probably shouldn't be, okay? Uh, well, he came out to say that he's kind of upset because um, Papa John's sales haven't been doing too well. And he feels like... You know, it's the NFL's fault that his pizza's not selling. He feels that because players are... Um, Testing. protesting and you know not standing for the national anthem it's making people not want to eat Papa John's pizza it's the first thing that comes to mind now my thing yeah. is Sarah what are you putting in the pizza that you're eating that is making you believe this because maybe <laughs> we shouldn't be eating it because the fact that you could you're even put that together is crazy to me so Twitter of course took him drag him to hell Yes. Um, and everyone was just kind of like, dude, your pizza sucks. Like, no offense. <laughs> it's not good anyway. <laughs> it ain't 1997 no more, 2003. Like, I don't know what you did to the crust. <laughs> yeah, we, we definitely don't know what you did to the crust. Yeah, the crust changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess uh, stock-wise, they've gone down 24%. And I'm like, dude, Oof. like, you know, you should probably stop watching football and focus on your pizza. <laughs> right. And figure out. Focus on your business plan, right. brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? And stop worrying about uh, <laughs> Racial injustices and maybe focus that through your company right. versus getting mad at it. Stop yeah. trying to put yourself up in your commercials. Maybe you need to focus Ooh. on the ingredients in the pizza. Right, honey. Because yeah. yeah. that How Botox that? right that? there, it ain't sir. Working. Oh, the Botox. the Botox is too much. And then here's my thing, too. It's like, you know, obviously, Papa John's, we were talking about this. Back in the day, college, that's what I used to yeah. live off of. The garlic sauce with the butter, I'd have 12 of them for, a, a, you know, a little small pizza and use all the butter sauce, all that changed, different subject. But my thing <laughs> is, why is he even... Why is he even even putting this in the same category as anything with any racial injustice or anything like that with bending the knee? Because a lot of Papa John's locations are also 
in urban neighborhoods, and I'm sure that's a strong amount of his business. Yeah. So why would you even make that statement in the climate we're in right now? Because people are even more sensitive about things. If you want your sales to increase, you're doing the opposite to help that fact. That's true. You know, I mean, you should be doing some type of campaign to promote bending the knee, okay. even if that's not what you Watch. feel. But Domino's gonna you know. come out with a take a take a knee, <laughs> take a knee day. <laughs> take a knee day. <laughs> five dollars off your well, pizza if we deliver right. you on your knee. You know, pizza Hut has already so a, a spokesperson for Pizza Hut made a statement saying that you know it hasn't affected their sales. Their sales yeah. are still doing great. So yeah. You know. His well, nasty. The, he's like the sponsor of the NFL, though, right? Papa John's yeah. is. Yeah, he is. So I feel like they, they would take a direct hit for that. And I think that's good, though. Honestly. What, that he would take a hit? That we're seeing that, that people, people taking a knee, that oh. these owners are losing money. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Honestly, agreed. I, yeah, I, I agree like, with that. Yeah. So, you know? wait, so you really think people, I, I, I mean, hey, look, I do not watch sports. I'll be the first to say. I never in my life have I associated Papa John's with any thing other than pizza like so like you yeah. have like when you go into Papa John's you're like yeah they sponsor the NFL yeah have he, you ever seen that Jerry Jer Jones commercial when he's rapping who? Yeah. Jerry Jones the owner of the Cowboys yeah. I, 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 I know yeah, yeah, I know yeah, yeah. his name I was like the white man with the gray hair I watch, yeah. I watch reality TV <laughs> and I listen to a lot of music <laughs> no, I, I feel like there's a bunch of businesses taking a hit yeah. from them taking a knee like direct TV they, a lot of people yeah. aren't even watching Sunday people Pass didn't anymore get their Sunday passes and yeah. like it makes sense like yeah. it's correlated obviously like yeah. if people if they're not watching it on Sundays they're not necessarily getting together and ordering a bunch of pizza on Sunday which might be a day of high sales for them and it's just not happening like it usually does yeah but, but how about your pizza is it's Nasty. Your pizza sucks. Yeah. I just started eating Papa John's. I'm late. Oh, I'm sorry. Late Maybe, oh, Maybe that's late. Late to the game. I just noticed the garlic and everything. That was, oh. That's good. No, so it, I get it what used to be saying. better. Uh -huh. It was yeah, better. It used to be yeah, way a lot better. more garlic, as really? you can tell from my face. Yeah. Yeah, a lot it used more to garlic. taste way, way better. <laughs> way better. But <laughs> Papa John's, he, he, he has some problematic yeah. positions in general. Right. Like, I mean, yeah. he, he wasn't trying to like pay his workers no yeah, more money for real. He was against like the minimum wages increases and stuff like that. So I just think we already kind of didn't like you. And your pizza sucks, and now we really don't like you because you're yeah. talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so you really just didn't help right. yourself at all yeah. if you no, were trying yeah. to. So yeah, yeah, because when Obamacare came uh, came out, he said, "Listen, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the prices mm -hmm. so I can pay for all of y'all mm -hmm. who is on Obamacare. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I'm going to do." So. You know, I don't understand why these business people, as the CEO of a company, I'm concerned about my business. Okay. All that? Yeah. I, I, where is my money? Where's yes, the brother. green? Yeah. You supposed to green? close yeah. your mouth and figure out how you're going to make it work <laughs> yeah, so you that, can increase your profit margin. Right. And yeah. he ain't doing that. You, you're you doing the opposite, bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, worry about yourself. Um, all right, so positive news. So <laughs> the Grammys are going to be coming up at the top of the year. It's crazy. And um, Clive Davis came out to say that uh, they're going to do a pre Grammy gala and they'll be giving an award called the industry icon award to Jay-Z they want to celebrate Jay-Z this year um, he's obviously come out to you know with his latest album and what they think is that Jay-Z is somebody that this year that they really want to is moving people forward within the music industry uh, I'm excited for it I think that it's to shine this light on on Jay-Z I think is yeah. well deserved I think it's yeah. a little bit late but it's a good you know never better late than that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean and as long as we're turning the eyes and turning the ears I support it Have you guys, what are you guys thinking yeah no absolutely um, although a lot of my conservative brothers and sisters are like well you look at me really? when you said that uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, why, why <laughs> The table. Well, Dr. Metzler is all over here with conservative. I'm like, I'm not conservative. Like, Look at that sweater. I mean, that, that's sweater. That's sweater is doing it. Yeah. Sure you know, I'm not conservative. <laughs> so they're like, okay, how could you support that? Because uh, Jay Z does all of this. He's denigrating women, all of that kind of stuff. I said, well, you know, it's very simple for me. The same way you can support, I don't know, slavery. Um, because we heard, <laughs> we heard the other day that uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, she's at the podium, and April Ryan says to her, does this administration support slavery? And she just walks out. It's very simple. Can't yes or no. Mm -hmm. and you should have said no, sis. <laughs> right. Right. You should have said, no. said no. And then General Kelly talking about a compromise, le lack of compromise, led yeah. to the Civil War. Yeah, so, it was a lack of compromise. Yeah, but there's no compromise in slavery. No. It's no. either slavery no. or it's not. Yeah, <laughs> it's no so compromise true. there. No, 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 there's, there's no compromise no. there. And it, it's, it, you could argue and say that capitalism itself denigrates women and therefore we're oh, all participants. Oh.
defense in that. Exactly. So What's your, your argument is bunk. Yeah. Anyway. Sorry, conservatives. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else needs to be said. Jay Z wins. Yeah, Jay Z wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm just happy. Kind of, it, it's you know, obviously, hip hop has 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 grown so many years, especially with it being a, a recognized and honored at award shows like American yeah. Music Awards and the Grammys. So it is an it, it is a nice place to know that it is at a place where they obviously it's part of our pop culture and sure. that it's grown enough where it, they do take hip hop artists and give them special treatment and special yeah. awards and, and honoring them. So and not to be the ageist or anything, but like find you know, someone young, someone younger. Because usually like yeah. these awards go to somebody who's either passed yeah, away or, legend, or yeah. somebody who yeah. is like, you right. know what I mean, not yeah. gonna get up and do no performance or right. nothing. Right. But the fact that Jay Z, you know, I think it's going to be somebody to, people will be, kids will be able to pay attention and be yeah. like oh I actually care about this pre-Grammy thing yeah. now because yeah. yeah. they ain't right never now. checking for it before <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah that's true <laughs> that's true well, well, alright all right. so that's all you got for us that's it alright Court alright well I have the most exciting news that I read about something coming to television because I'm always excited about television because I watch a lot of television and I'm thrilled to see that Angela Bassett and my personal woman crush Miss Aisha Hines and Jesse's crush, uh, <laughs> Rockman Dunbar, will be starring in a brand new series on Fox called 911. It's uh, being produced by our favorite Ryan Murphy, who yeah. obviously worked with all of them before. There's some other great stars in there, including Connie Britton and a bunch of other people. And basically, it's following all of the like emergency response yeah. people. Mm -hmm. So police, EMTs, firemen, and we don't get a whole lot of details because they're trying to keep a lot of Is it, it on lock. No, yeah. it's a drama. Is it is co is it called? Why you got a fry? It's like a dark comedy. Yeah, yeah it's a dark comedy. Like I, saw, I actually really saw a preview for it uh, the other night because they did it after American Horror Story aired. So this they, is weird. So, because like I the preview that the trailer because they have like three trailers yeah, out right yeah. now and the one that I saw it's like w is it a comedy? Like I don't know what this is. And then one but, was yeah. like definitely a drama. Yeah, it was like nine one one. Yeah, it, it features something about nine one one. Because Connie Britton is serious. like the nine one one operator that's getting like yeah. all of the uh, information. But it's Ryan Murphy. He comes up with some wild yeah, stuff. So I'm just excited to see yeah. whatever it is, and I'm just excited about the cast Great and everybody. Cast. So you can check that out in January yeah. on Fox. Hey, Angela, stay working. Stay and working, Angela. Stay Hassan. working. Stay working. They put right. that team together and stay they keep working. going, and we want to keep seeing her too. So mm -hmm. anyway, all right. So <laughs> another exciting news. Wow, wow. <laughs> we haven't done a Trump date in a whole a while. Oh, no. You know, we go a few weeks at a time <laughs> and try not to talk about. about right now. <laughs> I'm excited. You about. know, we try not to talk about Cheetos every week, but this week he. He's back, and, and it's not even him directly. It's sort of like him by proxy. So uh, a couple articles came out this week talking about sort of the effect about Trump on sort of brown folks and brown entertainers' lives and their careers, because there have been a few of our people, Steve Harvey, Chrisette Michelle, Tina Campbell, in the last few weeks that have been sort of in the news a lot about uh, their choices in terms of supporting Trump yeah. and how it has affected them. So Steve Harvey, currently, his show, which um, premiered again back in September, mm -hmm. um, he revamped his show. So it could be argued that the revamping of the show is really what has it kind is, of yeah. hurt it. But basically, his ratings dropped like by half. So his ratings are down on the show, on the talk show. Additionally, his um, uh, what's the other show with the the big little big shots? Yeah, their ratings went down on that show, and insiders say that Steve is starting to realize that when he uh, made his went to the White House and supported Trump, that his core audience, which is apparently middle class black people, I still don't know nobody that watches his talk show. <laughs> no, that's because they are at work, because they middle class <laughs> black people. People at Planet, people at work. Planet Fitness, but, but they number, can't watch TV it. number four. Is like, I got to work. Like, I'm like, because I asked Jeff, like, who class. watches this talk show? And how did it come back? But whatever. Anyway, so they say that he's sort of more aware. And they were, they were talking about it at one point, even his wife, his wife had told him not to go. Yeah. And she thought it was a bad idea, but he went anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, but now insiders are saying that he's trying to, you know, shift some things around and figure out and work with some people to figure out what to do to sort of get his core audience back now that it's apparent that across his uh, work, he's seeing an effect on his ratings and on his support from his people. Additionally, in the last week, Chrisette Michelle been all over social media. Just, 
she's a singer, songwriter. She decided to perform at the inaugural ball after how many people said nah? Mm -hmm. About 100. Yeah. She need that coin, honey. <laughs> after everybody said nah, she was like, you know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to bring us all together because that's my plan. And she didn't even meet Cheetos or talk to them or nothing. And really, she didn't get to talk, period. So no. bringing the people together, I don't really know how she was going to do that. Maybe there's some magical stuff coming Her out voice. the piano that was going to work. <laughs> no. But it didn't work. But she's been getting dragged for that since January. And it has, she has expressed in the last, especially the last couple weeks, how emotionally damaging it has been and she's putting it out there that she is being bullied to the point of I mean she's considered suicide she had a miscarriage but then she posted somebody else's miscarriage and it wasn't hers but she was trying to express to everybody what it feels yeah, like to weird. go through it which was all very was weird. weird very strange but maybe she's just cracking up period because of all the pressure and everything she apparently was dropped from her label Maybe that was just because she's not selling. We don't know. I but love you, girl. You I loved dope. her. Her music is great, but everything around the Trump thing has been a disaster. But she also tweeted out in support of Tina Campbell, who has also gotten some oh, backlash nice about it because uh, last week, or maybe it was week before, Tina, who is half of the group, a gospel group, Mary Mary, was on the talk show The Real, and she discussed how she had voted for Trump because she. Oh had her Christian beliefs, mm -hmm. and her Christian beliefs led her to believe that Trump was the better option, even mm -hmm. though she didn't think either of the options were good. And of course, social media came for her and dragged her down the street and took her wig off and threw it across the street. <laughs> so she... <laughs> Look, that's why Weed TV was like, this is going to be your you last know? season. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last Shut season of Mary Mary, quick. and she had a tour scheduled for the year, and she had to cancel it, and she announced the cancellation this week, basically because ticket sales are non-existent. So, the Trump, Trump effect is real, but is it bullying that we're like coming down on these people just because they felt like they should support the Trumpster? So was it just one sister? It was just one Mary? It was just that Mary, just Mary. Tina, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. But, in, and, but that's another one, because you have to consider all of the variables. I watched the Marys on Wii TV, and this season, Tina, you are not a likable girl, so maybe, <laughs> maybe it also that, has a lot to do with you, that goes into but it, right? yeah. that's just yeah. another element, so maybe, like, combined with the fact that you voted with Trump, and you're kind of not a likable girl, like, everybody's like, I'm not interested. Yeah. But, I mean, I, like, okay, I just go to poor Chrisette Michelle, I do, because it's just, like, I get it. It's just, like, January has well been gone and passed, and the fact that this girl's committing, I mean, look, I don't know what's going on with the miscarriage tea, like, girl, that's weird. <laughs> we're we're going to put that one aside. Yeah, we're going to let those box. Instagram photos go. <laughs> we're going to let that, yeah. You know, we're that was a that. rough night. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you, was... you go in through some things. <laughs> so we're going to just let that one slide. But I'm just like, I think it gets to a point where it's like, you know, we do kind of crucify people in the in the industry and in the media and with someone like her it's not like she went uh, came on that we know that she said she came out and voted for Trump. The, the girl look, she's looking for a stage at the end of the day and I feel it probably wasn't the right stage for you to pick and you know you got the repercussions from it for <laughs> the rest of the year girl. Uh, yeah, but here's well, the, the thing: if you associate yourself, associate yourself with him especially during that time people are gonna, whether you voted for him or not people are still going to associate you with him and think that you voted for him, you know? And that you have to be careful with that with certain with certain parts of your career because yeah. she clearly had a <clears throat> successful run, but, you know, the, the sensitive subject, <laughs> you know? And uh, she's clearly seen the repercussions of that. I know, but she's someone like we talked about, like, who was someone saying, like, hey, you know what, maybe there is a, obviously, girl, like, you had real high hopes that you was going to sit down and talk to this man in any way, shape, or form, you know what I mean? Like, Omarosa yeah. is the only black woman that can be in that. I'm just she's been real quiet, actually. <laughs> Don't get me started. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, why? What do you want? Well, well, that's a doctor. He's a rare. He was I feel it. He's ready. I put that key like, in the so, election. Yeah, let me tell you, mm -hmm. as it relates to Omarosa, I mean, first of all, She's been in the White House. What has she done? The answer is nothing. Exactly. Um, secondly, Zero. she has no support from black conservatives. No. We're like, but uh, isn't that her job to bring the relationship between the conservatives and the non-conservatives and the black? The, what exactly. is her job? That's her. But that's her relations. But yeah. she get it's kicked African out of American all the relations? <laughs> yeah, but see, that's, African American relations. <laughs> yeah, that's technically. Her that's job. her title. Yeah, and she's not even in the White House anymore. She's next door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the old executive office building, so uh, all that. She she's been real that. quiet. She's been real well, quiet. Well, she needs to be quiet because yeah. she gonna be walking out the door. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, you yeah. know, she needs to. Be, I mean, and as it relates to, you, you, you look, 
with this president, I mean, I've been uh, conservative probably since I was like 15. Mm -hmm. um, but with this president, I can't. Yeah. I cannot. Well, he's not even a conservative. Like no, you, he's right, conservative. that's right. He's not. He's, he's not, not a Democrat. He's a disaster. That's he, it. He's an opportunist. Yes. And so yeah. that's why he and Omarosa get along so well, because they are both opportunists. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact is, before she came to the White House, her job was selling cell phones. So, but we're not going to go there. Uh, um, you, the, <laughs> but can you, we please? You, Sarah, where wait. was she selling? Yeah. 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 Was this open, while she was opening up the Metro church? Metro PCS yeah. down. This is while she was opening she up the, the church. church. Like, I mean, I ain't mad at the hustle. You got to have, you know, who, wait, different avenues for revenue. But. I'm like, I got more questions. <laughs> like, it, it, with a provider? Was she like Verizon spokesperson? Like, who? <laughs> she was selling her branded Stop. Oh, Stop. I ain't never heard of those. Oh, yeah. She, well, she had psychic. Omarosa phones? Yeah. Right. Omarosa. And they weren't. It, that wasn't nice. I mean, it, it's just, so... From her game. standpoint, and you know, she's well, wait, well, look, how's yeah. her service though? Because my sprint is real bad. But she, she wasn't a service no, provider, I'm I'm she just yeah. had a phone. Wow, yeah. So, wow. I mean, really, she has no policy experience, she has nothing. I mean, so as a result of that, black Democrats hate her, yeah, and black conservatives hate mm -hmm. her, so she can get nothing done. And the fact is, she used to be a Democrat. Yeah. Except once she got fired from the White House twice. How do you get, How fired? Do you get fired from twice. the White House twice? Twice. Mm. And now you're back. And in you're the... back again. Yeah. I, and I just, just maybe y'all can answer this question for me, just because you kind of brought that up, the experience thing. So like everybody sort of fed into this. The people that voted for Trump, a lot of them like we wanted him to drain a swamp and like change and shift things up and all that. There is no other profession that I can think of mm -hmm. that we are excited about somebody that don't have no experience and don't have a clue what the hell they're doing. And like, you don't go to a surgeon and be excited because this you're his first surgery. Like right. you, <laughs> right. you, you don't true. go to a teacher and are super excited. Like, in fact, we get That's annoyed true. with TAs because we're like, you don't know, I'm gonna, I right. wanna talk to the professor. Yeah, like, right. you know what I'm no, saying? Right. So why in God's God, like I get you want somebody that maybe is not like entrenched financially and ruled by somebody else but the idea that like no experience at all or any sort of relevant experience was a great idea I can't I don't know how to explain that well to because it's it's identity politics I mean a number of people said I will hold my nose and vote for him because he's gonna change the courts um, he is a businessman uh, you know I'm sorry you're a businessman how many times did you file bankruptcy but I digress uh, so a lot of people pretty much said, you know, we will take that. He's going to drain the swamp. He hasn't drained the swamp. He just brought in new alligators. And that's essentially what you have in Washington at this point. Lobbying has not changed. N nothing, nothing really we, has changed. Yeah. And, and that's the problem. What do you feel about this whole investigation? Where you think it's gonna, where you think it's gonna go? Ooh, it's gonna go down. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Because I mean, I'm still on the fence if it's really going to go down. Well, well, here's the thing. So, way back in the day, I used to be a prosecutor. And so one of the things that we would do is we would try a case like you were taking down the mob, which is essentially what the prosecutor is doing in this case. You don't want to, the first person, you don't want it to be him, you don't want it to be anybody closely related to him. You want it to be, and if you look at the indictment, um, what it says is A and B. So. Essentially what you have, the indictment, the unsealed indictment, is A. We don't know no, would be. if would in be B is. it is Manafort's indictment with information leading to Trump. We don't know that. Right. So the A and the B part is extremely important to look at. Mm -hmm. And then you have uh, George, the guy they said, oh, he was the coffee boy. Coffee boy does not sit in the cabinet room that's true. next to the president. That's true. And, and that's the whole issue. And now one of his bosses had to withdraw uh, from being the uh, chief scientist, besides the fact that he's not a scientist. He knows nothing. <laughs> he's not a scientist. Yeah, but Can I get a job? <laughs> yeah. right. I like for real. I dress like Steven Spielberg right. today. Right. Anyone want to hire me to direct the movie? Easy six figures. Right. I'm down. So, so yeah. that's, you know, that's kind of what you, what you have. But people really are so entrenched in this identity politics that that's, that's what happened. But 
Hillary didn't help herself either. No, of course. You know, when True. you see the numbers that say the people who are coming out to vote are in rural Wisconsin, rural uh, pe uh, uh, Pennsylvania. You got to go. Uh, you got to go there. Yeah, and, and, and baby, if they coming out, they ain't coming out to vote for you. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> I mean, so right. what are you going to do? And Obama told her that. You yeah. Know, Obama told her that. Yeah, so. but, you know, so. And I know she made a statement today. Uh, she said that this the investigation before the election, you know, yeah. I think she made a statement today yeah. about that. So it's interesting that she's, you know, I'm sure she's very, she's sitting there wherever she is, smiling. She's smiling a little, yeah. but she's still mad. She's so she's sorry. Because she, mean, I'd be mad too. I'd be mad. Like she was sure. supremely qualified. Yeah. Yeah. But supremely, and, but she sat on that. She sat, she sat on that. But like, you guys can't see, I've done everything yeah. that should be president. Like well, it makes sense. Right. Everybody, everybody don't see it that way. Well, well, and then you, her campaign manager, if you're in a dog fight, you don't get a cat to fight a dog. Mm. Right. And that's exactly what she had. You needed somebody who is like Trump. Yeah. You need somebody nasty who will pull no True. punches. Yeah. And Robbie Mook was sitting up there, oh, yeah, you know, we're great. We're, we're good. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And we're like, dude, you're going to lose. Yeah. Straight up. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah. You know, so. And now we're stuck. And now we're stuck. But <laughs> well, we'll see how this all um, Unravels. Yes. Speaking right. of unraveling. Speaking of unraveling, we're going to move on to our ER Web Story Spotlight of the Week. Nice. That was nice, Courtney. I'm going to give you that one. I got skills. That was, that was skillful right there. Uh, well, someone else who's also been in the news this week is uh, Tyrese Gibson. He's been actually in the news the last couple weeks. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> A lot of people have been worried that he's having some type of emotional breakout breakdown because it started, he's been in a, a kind of bitter custody divorce battle or custody battle custody with his battle. Uh, ex wife. Custody uh, battle with Fa uh, Fast and the Furious. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. been fighting with Dwayne. <laughs> fighting Johnson. everybody. He's fighting everybody. He's been very everybody. vocal about fighting with Dwayne, <laughs> The Rock Johnson, about the, the next Fast and the Furious movie because. He's upset that uh, that The Rock has a spinoff from The Fast and Furious, and that's delaying the process of them filming the next Fast and Furious starring him. Coins. And he needs his coins, especially while right. he's in Chris this bitter Michelle, you custody know. You know. battle, right? Well, he um, was concerning people this week because of the fact that he posted a video yes, uh, did, that yeah. was a, about a three-minute video. No, it was six minutes. Oh, yeah, you're right. It was six <laughs> minutes video. All right, I only six. got three. It's actually seven minutes, exactly. <laughs> Seven-minute video uh, that starts off talking about his feud with Dwayne Johnson, and he, and he goes and talks about his ex-wife, Norma Mitchell Gibson, um, and talking about kind of like that he's apparently paying her $13,000 a month in, in the divorce uh, settlement and that she's trying to get more money, and then, you know, she has restraining orders against him, all this stuff that's going on, and he had this video that uh, we're going to show you a little clip of, of of him having a little emotional breakdown that caused concern. Oh, God. Don't take my baby, please. Don't take my baby. <laughs> This is all I got. Don't take my baby, okay? I've been I've been away from my baby for two months. I just want I just want my baby and no one's listening because no one's in the courtroom. I'm not doing anything illegal. I'm not doing anything illegal, but I don't want nobody. Oh my god, am I doing something illegal? A video little, uh, just a <laughs> piece <laughs> of the seven minute video. You can easily go yeah, many it's places. Everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Look it's at everywhere. it. Look, now, it was mental health day the other day, so we just we gonna let it go. Now, he has go. made a statement that he is okay. Yes. Um, he wanted fans to know because, like I said, this caused a lot of alarm <laughs> and, and people were like, what's going on? I criticized because some people were saying he is an actor. And is this all an acting scheme to plot against, you know, his ex-wife in court? And that's not show, a good you know, reel, right there. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of things going back and forth. There are court documents that show his ex-wife accused him of abusing their daughter, who's 10 years old. She said Tyrese hit uh, hit their daughter 12 to 16 times, and that the daughter said she could not sit down due to the pain. 
Uh, she also claims that Ty, Ty, uh, Tyrese was diagnosed as bipolar and manic depressive uh, by three therapists, um, and that uh, he, she said that he also allegedly hit her while they were married and even while she was pregnant. So there's a lot going back and forth with this. Tyrese, you know, has, like I said, mentioned that he's fine. Um, but what do you guys think about all this breakdown and putting it on, you know, the video? And do you think that it's a it was legit, or do you think that he kind of, you know, manifested that a little bit to help him with this case? Like, what do you think? I'd like to believe <laughs> <laughs> that he wouldn't put his child out there in that manner. Um, but I mean, like I said, it was Mental Health Awareness Day the other day, and it's something I'm big in and into um, because it, I think we don't give people credit enough to what they actually do go through and what kind of stress. That he really does go through on a day-to-day -day basis and if he has been diagnosed with bipolar and, and manic depressive yeah. I mean that's a hard pill to swallow that's a, that's you're dealing with a lot anything like that um, so I don't want to like <clears throat> take that away but at the same time it's just kind of like bro you be out here writing books talking about you you know man you are oh, a man. very unlikable person <laughs> because you have said a lot of very unlikable things yes. and represented yourself in a very unlikable way so you're looking like papa john's right now <laughs> yeah, exactly like i want to be sympathetic i really do because custody battles for anybody is it's awful and people say horrible things about each other oftentimes time. things that are yeah, not yeah. true about each other just to yeah. pull and pull and i think you have a 10 year old daughter yeah. and you posted yeah. that dude. Yeah. Like the flying over the school thing with the flag, yeah, talking about say, Shayla is the best or whatever it was. She's Shayla, like, that you know, daddy loves you. It was something. All I can think to myself, yeah, yeah. it was a plane. He hired a plane. Well, or, well, no, we don't know who hired it. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly, he hired, he hired a, plane. a plane to fly over. But regardless, like that's still, her friends are going to see this yeah. and know this. She's in school. She's 10, dude. Like, I get it. You probably going, you need to go. You got a wife. Go in the bathroom with your wife and y'all sit on the floor and pray. Like, why are you on Facebook? Yeah. Why do they got to go in the bathroom though and pray? Oh, yeah. no, shoot. So, I mean, just pause it. That's why I thought bathroom. Like okay. something prayer small room. where y'all just room. together, a room. like a, a prayer, prayer room. room. I mean, bathroom is what just came to mind. But regardless, I'm just gonna do something. Like, I just don't see don't. how you could just take the camera and yeah, just record yourself, and then you upload it, and then you sit in there like, okay, yeah. Yeah. this is this is I'm the right move. Like you yeah. have to put the title. Yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, like you're so vulnerable in that in that that moment right there, and then you just upload that. Like that's, that's something you record, and then you like look at it and you like, yeah. Hey, yeah. yeah. I'm like, I just had to get it out. Yeah. Like, I, I got it not, out. I might not yeah. want to send. Let me not push send or upload on yeah. that. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, but it's, it's hard. It's hard because I, I feel for the brother if that's the mm -hmm. case that he's going through these things. And, you know, I want to believe that this is nothing that he's created to help him in his lawsuit. But it's kind of, you know, it's it, I don't know if I 100% believe it. I'm telling you, his next book is going to be on uh, mental health. It but, probably is. But listen, if it's true that he is suffering from community. Or, no, it'll probably be another book about black women and how they screw over. They, they black get men to that point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet. Maybe. I'm bipolar because of her. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, today he also threatened to quit uh, Fast and Furious. Well, he can't. He, he broke. He, he told TMZ he broke. That's right. why he That's upset. True. But he, he really? said that it, he basically said if The Rock comes back, that he, Ta he's threatening Tyrese, to quit. Tyrese, you so, better close your mouth because they will replace you. They will replace write your, you if you write your own music, then you be able to make coin off that. Oh. Mm -mm. With his album? Good? Was it decent? No, his album. The Rock I mean, said it was dope, black. Yeah, The Rock. No. I just watched The, the Rock. Rock said, yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious. The Rock said Okay, black. but like, I feel like The Rock listens to like ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here for The Rock's musical choices. <laughs> but he was, but he, he was talking because Tyrese was talking yeah. all that crap, so right. he was like, yo, black Yo, this is whack. Right. <laughs> right. No, definitely yeah, that's true. Funny, but well, whatever. you know, we wish you the best, Tyrese. Uh, we'll still keep reporting We wish you, Shayla we wish the, the best. best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, Shayla. We hope you, your daughter is Shayla, okay. Because Shayla got to look at those videos Shayla, of the plane that's flying yeah. over our school with the best. Shayla is 10. Yeah. Uh, can, you know how, where you at at 10, at 10 yeah. years old? You in what, fifth grade? And Everybody's on YouTube, too, everybody looking got, at it. Like, everybody got a smartphone. Shayla, yeah, like, yeah. your daddy. Shayla, Shayla daddy, what's going Shayla, on? Your daddy crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pulling the memes not, up. Yes. Like, like, and I, I got a whole Twitter follower talking about uh, his memes. And I'm like, they, these children are going to, they poor. Like, he oh. washed Wendy Williams off the map. He, yes, like, he did. He did. He did. <laughs> he did, actually. Because those memes were everywhere. And oh, yeah. then they Tyrese took over. He did. All right, well, speaking of taking over, our last story of the day is Tiffany Haddish is taking over Saturday Night Live. Oh, no 
November 11th. Yes, yes. She is scheduled to uh, host the show, which will also have the musical guest Taylor Swift, if you're into her. Um, <laughs> wow. How long are you yeah. going to talk? Sorry, that's a little shady. If you're Sorry. Right yeah. That was a pretty tall palm tree. I mean. I'm so, I think this is going to be one of their highest rated shows. It yeah. probably will be. But I they, mean, I'm going to watch it live for the first time. Yeah, like, Saturday Night Live announced it on Twitter. Um, they also announced several other people that are coming up after that, including um, the week after. It, so, obviously, Tiffany Haddish is November 11th. November 18th is Chance the Rapper with musical guest Eminem. I'm, oh, that's going to be a good show. Chance that, good now, that time. one, really that's, that's going to be tight. That's yeah. going to be yeah. tight. So, yeah. Tiffany's everywhere. I'm really happy for her. I'm she's a, she's, a, she's been on BHL. She, we had her at the she beginning. Has, so. yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's awesome. And her side Why you sound so surprised over there, Jared? Jared's like, really? No, I'm just saying. I'm trying to just. Really? All right. Your invitation's revoked, Jared. We're about to promote your next film. Forget it. I'm just saying. I always go honor me the same way. I just wrote you came here to Black Hollywood live. Why are you making that into a negative? He's like, I'm, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm about to be I'm on that tonight. I'm messing with real. Jared. No, I'm messing with Jared. No, he was happy. He was celebrating. I just had to give him some crap. You just, he had hopes. He's like, I'm going to be on SL now. Yeah. Now you just sitting over here. Rub it on Look, Tyrese. Did I have my mental breakdown? Look, let me record myself. I'm just trying to make it up there. Let me record myself real quick. What is that? Can I get a seat at the table? <laughs> you know, I'm happy down here. He's like, I'm just trying to... <laughs> Jared, you always welcome, man. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right, that concludes oh our stories God. for the day. But just really quick, speak, Jared, what are you working on new? What's your, what's your next project that people can see you at? Um, I'm just working on my own stuff right now. I've been writing a lot of my own stuff. I'm still finishing school, so I'm in school oh, wow. working on that. Um, what are you uh, studying? Uh, fine art and business. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Where do you see to take that? Um, well, I'm, a, I'm a, like a working visual artist as well. Like I had a show up in Portland, Oregon. I make mixed media hoops. It's, you got to check it out. Ooh, it's really? Yeah, it's on yeah. Like okay. That's what I was doing before I was even acting. I was always just into the arts. So, um, but yeah, I just got an agent. So I've been going out to audition. So hopefully I'm going to land something soon. I've been doing commercials, all that work. But yeah. All right. Well, man, you know, you're, writing, congratulations yeah. with the film. I mean, I know it came out this summer, but, you know, everybody, it was a very high anticipated film. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm sure. How, did Snoop help you with any of the, uh, just uh, just some tips to play him? Yeah, well, I got to meet Snoop and then Daz and his dad. Well, Snoop was there on set, but, like, FaceTimed him and he kind of, like, mm -hmm. gave me some of the gang signs. Because I was, I was, my first question was, like, yo, what can I throw up? Like, what do you throw up? So, like, I got the dog pound and all that stuff. So, that was cool. But, but yeah, like a lot of the Death Row members were there. I got to meet them, and they, they helped me through it a lot. So that, that was cool. That's dope, man. Yeah. Awesome. What would you say was your biggest kind of lesson uh, learned from doing the film like that and now going, getting an agent and putting yourself out there um, that you didn't think before? That you're kind of like, dang, I was not expecting that shit. Um, how, <laughs> in, right? how intense it was. Like, it was super. I knew it was work. I knew it was work, but just, like, seeing everybody just working so hard and the director Benny Boom seeing them grinding and the producer LT and just like yeah. wow you guys are not sleeping like really not sleeping I'm like okay I'm gonna go back to my trailer <laughs> like, out there still working just yeah. to make that project happen so I think that what it was seeing like everybody come together and the camaraderie was like awesome to like be around that well, great yeah, man. Well, we're excited to see your next stuff and you, and um, you know come back to BHL. All jokes Definitely. aside, come back to BHL. We'll put <laughs> you at the big table. We'll put you at the big table. Yeah, yeah, the big table. table. We'll talk about your stuff. Talk about Wait, your yeah, stuff. and you have to send us one of your videos. Yeah, we'll so see that one of your we videos. Play. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll play, play one of your Okay, sweet. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. sure. And then where can fans find you on um, social media? JaredEllis.com. Uh, my Instagram is Jared Ellis. That's J A R R E T T underscore Ellis E L L I S. So. Okay, cool. And Dr. Chris, where can where are you at next? What's going on with you? Well, next. I'm working with an excellent PR team to take me from strictly politics uh, to more lifestyle. Okay. Um, oh. You know, I'm trying to get my sexy. So well, I was going to say, I like that you All have right. that. You're, you're known as the sexy politics. You know, the sexy politics. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I like that. that. That's right. All right. Well, All thank right. you for coming in today. Where can fans find you on social media? DrMetzler.com okay. is uh, my website. Okay. At DrMetzler on Twitter. Okay. At DrMetzler also on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. All right, you be yes. taking them bathroom selfies. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, where can fans find you? Everywhere at DJ Jesse J. Courtney. I'm all over at Stuart Starlet. You can find me at Daryl Kristen on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and we will see you all next week. Peace. Peace.
from executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio, Instagramming, at KingXOBay. Thanks for tuning in. Hollywood Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.